Crossovers are a typical form of getting space from your defender in order to score. Some were purely for entertainment and others were just plain embarrassments. Kevin Durant With Kevin Durant being nearly 7 feet tall, you wouldn't expect him to have point guard-like ball handling skills, but over the years, Durant has aimed to prove us all wrong. In the early November of 2012, Durant and the Thunders were at home against the Trailblazers, up 24-21. With 32 seconds left in the first quarter, Durant faked left and hit a nasty crossover to the right which had Sasha Pavlovich on the heels of his feet before literally falling and needing to brace himself with one hand. After the match, Durant was humble about the cross saying, I can do a lot more. It's always things you can do more. I talked to one of my good friends and he said no matter how good you are playing, you always can do more. That's how I look at it. I just gotta find ways to help them out and put them in great positions and continue to be a good vocal leader, a positive leader on the bench and every single time down the court and we'll be fine. Allen Iverson Allen Iverson can be crowned as one of the original inventors of the crossover and has popularized it in the last decade in the NBA. Iverson has done many crossovers during his time in the NBA, but the one that sticks out is his move on Jock Vaughn. With the 76ers up 34-29 with 9 minutes and 30 seconds left in the quarter, Iverson had the ball and was dribbling when Jock Vaughn stepped up and challenged Iverson. Vaughn was guarding Iverson so tightly that it pushed Iverson back to the half-court marker before Iverson had enough and crossed back once to get Vaughn on his heels and then did it right again to make him stumble backwards and fall before hitting the shot. The crowd in the building went absolutely crazy even though it was their player who got dropped. Jamal Crawford When your nickname has the word crossover in it then you better be able to live up to the hype, and that's exactly what Jamal Crawford does. Jamal has played for eight different teams in his nearly 20 years long career in the NBA, but a few moments stand out in particular. On November 26, 2008, Jamal and the Warriors were in the TD Garden to take on the Celtics when Jamal Crawford executed yet another ankle breaker. With the Warriors down 11-18 in the first quarter, Jamal had the ball in the left side of the top of the key when Ray Allen stepped up to guard him on the perimeter. As soon as Crawford had his chance, he took it by dribbling left, right, then left again which sent Ray Allen falling to the floor with the Celtic crowd in awe. Jamal has never been one to talk trash, and that's why it took him 10 years to address the crossover when someone asked who he thinks he crossed the worst in his career. Jamal responded saying, that's a good question. I've had a lot of good crosses. Probably I think the one that gets the most attention is the Ray Allen one, the one where he fell when I was playing with Golden State. It gets a lot of attention because it was in Boston. Steven Jackson hit the shot in the corner, and it was against Ray Allen who was such an iconic player, so probably that one. James Harden Over that last few seasons, James Harden has become one of the deadliest players with the ball in his hand, and in a couple of instances, he showed defenders why they shouldn't even to try to stay in front of him. During March of 2018, in a much-anticipated matchup between the Rockets and the Clippers, James Harden did yet again another signature move that got the B.A. talking. With the Rockets up 28-7, Jordan dribbled up the court and began to size up Wesley Johnson, who was guarding him at the time. The first mistake was thinking James could even be guarded in this situation, but Wesley took on the challenge. Harden quickly began dribbling between his legs before heading left then doing his signature double step back which sent Wesley Johnson tumbling to the ground. The Clipper crowd who just say their player get embarrassed went crazy, while Harden took a few seconds, staring down and admiring the masterpiece of a moment he just created before nailing the three-pointer wide open with ease. This quickly went viral on social media and many other players talked about it immediately. Of course Harden addressed the media about his crossover when he said, it felt good man, I've been in my bag all year, so it's just one of the moves where I had to make him dance a little bit and made the shot. I was looking at him, and he was looking at me. I was just trying to figure out what he was doing. I was going to shoot it, but I was waiting to see, to figure out what was going on. I was confused. Like did the ref call side out of bounds? Coach D'Antoni even loved the crossover saying, it wasn't too bad, was it? It was unbelievable. The game was over, and he put it away. It was unbelievable. It's not the first time. I've seen a lot of them. Come on now. That's James. If coach wasn't enough, Teammate Eric Gordon even chimed in saying, it was a great move of course. It was crazy. You don't see things like that all the time. I definitely laughed. 
Everybody is going to be talking about that for a while. Just over a year after the Wesley Johnson cross was yet another matchup between the Rockets and the Clippers in the Staples Center. With the Rockets up 110 to 109 with two minutes left in the game, Harden was dribbling up the court when lockdown defender Patrick Beverly stepped up to the plate. Harden did the dribble between his legs before doing the double step back which completely turned Beverly around before pulling up for the deep three in Beverly and Paul George's face. Not only did Harden sink the three, but was fouled by Beverly which was significant because it was his last foul and got him ejected. Beverly's rivalry with Harden started when he left the Rockets in 2017 and the competition between them is always intense whenever these two meet on the court. After the matchup, Harden kept his cool when talking about the crossover and Beverly dropping when he said, it's always great to compete against him. We all know what Pat does, he's great and he'll try to get in your head. If you let him get in your head and get into your body, he can be a pest. Beverly on the other hand was pretty heated and Beverly walked towards the sideline to greet Clippers owner Steve Ballmer before the game when he heard a taunt from a Lakers fan in the crowd at the Staples Center. The fan told Beverly, don't make me call James Harden and Beverly replied by saying, I'll lock his ass up too. Stephen Curry Stephen Curry is used to making highlight reels for his shooting, but during a game in 2015, he absolutely put someone on the skates. In 2015 in a game between the Warriors and Clippers in the Staples Center with the Warriors down 39-48, Curry was dribbling up the court when Chris Paul stepped up to guard him. Curry drove towards the basket as if he was going to lay it up, but headed towards the baseline instead which confused CP3. By the time he caught up, Curry put him on the skates with a simple double behind the back move which had Chris using a hand to brace himself up. All of this took place right in front of the Warriors bench which sent them into a frenzy after Curry nailed the mid-range jumper. It took CP3 five years to respond to the ankle breaker when he went live on Instagram and addressed it. He said, listen man, listen, he got me. Curry quickly responded by saying, the funniest part of it is how many times we have all been dropped. You dropped me at least three times. I got you that one time in LA. Brandon Jennings got me in my rookie year. Like, you can never ever live it down. If you play defense long enough, it's going to happen. Lance Stevenson Lance Stevenson has been a lockdown defender and mid-range specialist his entire career. So when he made someone dance with a crossover, it was a memory he'd never forget. With the Lakers up 32-29 against the Wizards, with 8 seconds left in the first quarter, Lance had the ball at the top of the key with Jeff Green guarding him. Lance did a bunch of hesitation moves before faking to the rim and pulling back which made Jeff Green dance as he stumbled back nearly 10 feet before Lance drilled the shot. The Lakers bench who had a front row view of everything, all sprung up going crazy and practically running up to the court in a frenzy. After the game, a salty Jeff Green spoke to the reporters and said, I can confirm that he did step on my foot, but run with it. I don't care. He crossed me if that makes everybody happy. On the other hand, Ray John Rondo spoke and said, I kind of said something to him at halftime. I checked his ankles making sure he was okay. He was fine. Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook has done so much with his stats averaging triple doubles over the years that he could be classified as great simply off the bat, but he excels in other areas as well. In 2011 when Westbrook was still in the Thunder, they traveled to the Target Center in a matchup against Timberwolves. With the Thunder up 50-46 with only 12 seconds left till the end of the second quarter, Westbrook called for isolation at the top of the key which sent Luke Ridnar up to guard him. Westbrook waited until the 10-second mark before putting on a small hesitation and faking left, but going right which confused Luke and completely made him lose his footing. Luke nearly face-planted, and if it wasn't for his quick hands that he pulled out to brace the fall, he would have most definitely face-planted. So, if you enjoyed this video, share your thoughts in the comments section and subscribe for more videos just like this.